When I look at the future for mining, I think it's going to be completely different. The mine of the future is going to be technology driven, it's going to be data driven. I see a mine where people can have a little more flexibility in hours of work. I see us able to move material very efficiently, very effectively. I see a lot of three-dimensional planning. I see a real dynamic and exciting environment. We have fewer regular operators that we see today, but we're going to have more people in terms of technologists and IT and engineers figuring out how to operate those mines. And we'll be doing it in a way that's safer, it's more environmentally friendly, and more cost-effective for the mining companies. The mine of the future for me is going to be an exciting place to work because we're going to embrace technology in everything we do and the young people are going to want to work for this industry because of the technology. That to me is where the big wins are going to be. I think our biggest challenge in the mining industry is the fact that our productivity is decreasing. A lot of the sort of near surface, easy to find deposits have been depleted. And so our future very much is at depth. The challenge there is that you're going through considerable expense to find and get to these ore bodies. The Ontario mining industry has been alive for more than 100 years. You know, engineers and geologists have traditionally always planned mines the same way. And if we keep doing that, we're always going to get the same results. For us to be successful and be a, a major contributor to society and where society's needs are going into the future, we have to innovate. In some ways, it's fairly easy to make decisions in terms of what to do. We focus on how do we mine faster, safer, more effectively, and more responsibly all the time. I mean, there's a lot of competitive advantage to bringing innovation into your company because you'll become more productive, you'll become much more energy efficient, and you're gonna decrease your mining costs. So when you look at that as a business, you're, you're stronger. If you have a culture of innovation within your company, you're gonna be able to adopt quickly, apply that, reap the benefit, and be the one to be at the top. Once you put value on innovation, and that's a value of your company, then you have to be committed to take risks in order to essentially chase that value. There's a cost to implementing these technologies, and so if someone wants to be first and try something, then I think it's, it's about different companies trying different things and then sharing the information so that we can all get the benefit of using the technology later. There's a lot more willingness to share learnings because we understand that we're an industry, we're not just individual companies. Rather than having R&D within one company, each company trying to do their own thing, what we're trying to do now is a new model. So mining companies getting together, agreeing on this is the challenge that we have, agreeing on these are some solutions that we want to chase. You know, ventilation on demand, use of electric vehicles underground, cutting technology underground. And working together with the NORCATs, working with Morarco, the universities, some of the colleges and so on, to help to create this ecosystem of innovation and move it at a faster rate than we've ever done in the past. We're working together on the challenges in Canadian mining so that we can together solve and figure out how we're going to offset our challenges of mining deeper ore bodies and doing that with increasing productivity. Onaping depth is located below Craig Mine, so it's in the Onaping area of Ontario, which is just north of Sudbury. It's a fantastic ore body. What makes it unique is it's uh, quite a bit of depth, a lot deeper than we're currently used to mining in Sudbury. In terms of designing the mine in order to overcome, we've had to adopt a new way of thinking. The two biggest things we saw was the geotechnical risk of depth, and the other one was the ability to work in a hot environment. The rock temperature is quite hot at that depth, Probably the most fundamental decision to unlock the potential for Onaping Depth was the decision to design it around a battery electric mobile fleet. Being in the northern Ontario climate where we need to heat all our air in the wintertime, uh, the depth means we have to cool the air uh, year-round to make it tolerable to, to work in. And the volumes of air that you have to you know, send down a traditional mine to clear the contaminants from diesel operation mean you know, very large uh, ventilation systems. 
So going to battery electric allowed us to reduce the infrastructure, the heat, to cool, and to deliver the air. So the capital reduction was quite material and greatly simplified sort of the design of the mine. All in all, it had a, a quite a, a pervasive impact on the economics of the project while improving things that are important to us, like the hygiene of the work environment. Uh, obviously, we're, we're burning less combustible fuels, which means less GHG. So it's a really multifaceted sort of solution. And that's really what it took. And I think uh, what makes mining unique is it allows for, I think, one of the few fully economical applications of a battery electric equipment because of the multifaceted benefits it brings. If you were to go down board and the first thing you would notice is there's no pipes anywhere because we're not pushing compressed air. Now, the only pipes are there are for water. The second thing you would notice is there's very little noise in the mine. And the air is much, much cleaner because there's no diesel anywhere in the air. And so in surveys we've done with our own employees and our own miners in the mine, they all tell us that the mine feels better, the sound is much lower, the air is not quite as hot. Primarily, it still looks like a mine. I mean, that's part of the equation, but it's all the little stuff that you would notice. Initially, we, we sort of thought about it as traditional mining methods, traditional diesel gear, traditional ventilation, but we also knew that we were in a very environmentally sensitive area. And so if we were gonna do this, we needed to think differently. And so the whole concept of the electrification of the mine came from wanting a, a safer mine, wanting a greener mine, and wanting a mine that would be easier to permit as well. So the technology helped us get the project approved, get it quicker, get the permitting quicker, which is exactly what we want. I will say there were naysayers even within the company that thought that we were crazy for trying this, but it's all about, you just gotta stick to your principles, right? Lucky for me, uh, our company's backed up by a board that believes in new technology, believes in new ideas. And so it, it's just about the proof and running the numbers and showing that you can do things differently. And once the concepts were sold, everybody came around. A lot of it was about change management, communication, showing people it could be done, and actually executing some of it, right? And, and we tested some of the gear in some of our other mines to show that it worked, so that it wouldn't be such a stretch for people to approve an entire mine. But it, it's, it's always about change management, communication, making sure you involve all the stakeholders. The wireless communication system that is our pride and joy is the one that's at Tot and Mine and we've been putting a lot of effort into getting it right. So we have a fiber optic backbone down the shaft into the mine and on the mine workings what we have there is a network of access points that are able to pick up signals from RFID tags. So every person in the mine has an RFID tag and our equipment is also got an RFID tag. So as people and equipment are moving through the mine, these access points are detecting where and who is in what location. And we can see on each level where all the people and all the equipment, all the processes are happening. And so we know our drilling footage, uh, where the hole is located, how far down the hole it is. We have that data in real time now. We're starting to look at how do you take data from the face, uh, let's say a, a photograph of the face, wirelessly send it to surface and use an algorithm to tell you, yeah, that's, that's ore, move that material, or no, that's rock, that's the waste pile. So you, using uh, some algorithms and higher level data analytics to do some really smart things. And we also have the ability to turn on and off fans. As people come into a zone, the fans detect that you're there the fan will come on, it knows the type of equipment you're driving, it knows how much CFM is required for that piece of equipment, so the fan ramps up to fit the requirements of the air for the people in the equipment as they move in and out of the zones. That's a huge energy saving actually for our business, upwards of 50% of normal operations with this ventilation control system. Like other mining companies, they're seeing a big advantage for our workers and for the bottom line for the business. I mean, this is the technology age that we're able to leverage that taught in mind.
I started the industry, it's kind of funny, I started in 1990. We had one computer in the whole technical services department. So I've been in the industry now 27 years, and you look at how far the technology has come, and everything we've accomplished in the last 27 years, and, and the exponential curve that it's gotten us there. All of that innovation and technology that's coming to the mine, introduction of drones underground, Genetech, Simbots, all of that kind of stuff is just coming in so quickly that it makes you start thinking about, geez, what can we do next? What's the next piece of equipment? What's the next thing we want to do? Let's not just wait and see what's coming. Let's start asking those questions about, this is what we want to see. How can you help us do that? Just the energy and enthusiasm that we have for working together, for working with OEMs, working with the SMEs. It's an unbelievable, satisfying feeling. This is a really great moment for mining, for Canadian mining, for mining in Ontario, because there's just so much that's coming at us and the appetite is there. You're not fighting you know, to bring an innovation idea into a mine, they want it. There's a customer at the end of the line who needs this and wants it, and so it really makes my job worthwhile. It's a lot of fun, it's business worthwhile, it's safety worthwhile, and it's good for the planet, it's good for the communities. I'm super excited about it.